Hi, Church family. We are continuing to talk about Jigsaw Puzzle Theology, and thank you for joining me for this third class. And uh, today we want to talk about where do I fit in? Where do I fit in? Because, you know, we talked last time about every piece having a place and, and every uh, a place for every piece and every piece in its place well, it was the title. The idea that each of us needs to be serving and, and working in the body for the body to be what it's supposed to be. And I want us to think some about a jigsaw puzzle. You know, it's easy when you pick up a piece and you see it's got, you know, two uh, straight edges. You go, ah. It's a corner piece, boom, it goes right there. Or you see it's got at least one straight edge. Ah, it's an edge piece. And then you get that piece that's just a strange shape and, and maybe it's a blue color. And you don't know if it's sky, you don't know if it's water, you don't know if it's this lady's blue dress. You know, there's lots of different things and it's not that easy to tell what it is. Some of us feel that way. We kind of feel like, you know, I'm just a generic church member, okay? I don't really stand out. There's nothing special about me. I'm not doing anything out of the ordinary church. Um, things would be just the same if I'm there or I'm not there. But we need to remember that when any piece is missing, when any piece isn't doing what it's supposed to do, there's a hole. And you may be there, but if you're not in your place, if you're not doing your thing, if you're not doing your part, the body's not going to be what it's supposed to be, and it's not going to grow as it's supposed to grow. And so we need to think about, okay, we, we have this jumble of pieces, and what do we do? Well, let's go back over some ideas that uh, we've talked about. First off, don't confuse gifts with gifted and talented, okay? Uh, when we talk about gifts in the church, they're ways of serving, okay? They're not some special ability, you know, that uh, before you were baptized, you couldn't carry a note, you go into the water, you come out and you're a gifted worship leader. It doesn't work that way at least in my experience, and it doesn't fit with what I see in the Bible. The gifts that are talked about in the Bible are ways of serving. And, and so what we're looking for isn't something mysterious, okay? We're trying to identify how to take the things that you are good at and use them to build up the church. I'm not looking for you to develop a new talent. I'm not hoping that you become a Bible teacher, that you become a song leader, that you become a preacher. I don't mind. I mean, I, I, I do hope some of you will. But if that's not you, you don't have to become something you're not. If your skills lie elsewhere, you're not deficient, okay? In fact, you're exactly who you're supposed to be. Okay? Now, we talked about how God gives gifts to the church, and that means you are a gift to the church. You are at UCC because God wanted you here doing what you can do with your talents and being who you're supposed to be because of your talents. And then God gifts his people with a way to use their talents, all right? If you're an administrator, you find a way to use those administration skills, right? If you're an accountant, you find a way to bless the church with, with your abilities with numbers. If you're a scientist, your insights into science and your ability to see the world in a different way are needed at the church. And we need poets, and we need musicians. Yes, even those that play instruments. We may not have you play during worship, 
but you can bless people and praise God with those talents. And maybe you're an athlete and we find ways to use that athletic ability. Maybe you're a builder and we find ways for you to use those skills. That's what we're looking for. That's what we're talking about. But remember, God arranges the body the way he wants. Let's look at that. 1 Corinthians 12. I've referenced it before. Let's read it. Paul is talking about the church as a body and that we're all members. And in verse 18, he says, But in fact, God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. Did you hear that? God has arranged the parts just as he wanted them to be. It's not about us deciding. God makes these decisions. Now, Paul's talking about the physical body, but it's during discussion of how we as a church are a body. And down in verse 24, it says, God... um, as a God has combined the members of the body and has given greater honor to the parts that lacked it so that there should be no division in the body. Right? So God is the one who decides where we are. And God decided that you should be at UCC right now. He said, well, no, I decided that. You know, I I thought this was best for my kids. I thought this was closest to my house. I, I understand that. And I, I don't pretend to explain every detail of providence and how God decides those things, but I believe that God has brought you here for a reason, for a purpose, to do something, okay? And so we're in this body to work and do something to build up the church. And and so as we look at the vision that the leaders of this church has set out for our church, it's three words, it's upward, inward, and outward. And so we grow upward through our worship experience. We, We grow inwardly through smaller group meetings, some of those being on Sunday nights, some of those being on you know Wednesday morning at the ladies Bible class there's lots of different types of smaller groups in which we're growing but these are groups with the purpose of edification with the purpose of getting to know one another with the purpose of being able to share one with one another I I mentioned in a sermon uh, last year that when Bradley was interviewing to become our lead minister, he said something that I thought was beautiful. When asked about his dream for the university church, he said, I dream of a church where everyone has someone to confess to. And I think that's what the idea of the smaller groups are about. And then finally, we had the outward growth, which is people being able to use their gifts use their talents, all right, in in a gifted way to be able to build up the body, to be able to bless outsiders, okay? And so that's where we get the idea of outward. But how do you find your ministry? How do you find your ministry? How do you find what God wants you doing in the body? Let me offer some suggestions. First off, reminder, said it before, I want to say it again, you aren't looking for hidden special abilities, okay? You are looking for how God wants you to use your talents, okay? That's the idea. So as we do this, the whole process needs to be bathed in prayer. You spend a lot of time, you make this a spiritual activity. Again, it's not about going online and doing a survey to find out, you know, what is my spiritual gift? Uh, there's lots of those tests online. They kind of remind me of those Facebook quizzes, you know, you know, which Harry Potter character are you? It's that sort of thing. They're not scientific. They're not tested. They're just somebody sat down and wrote something, okay? Uh, so we're not looking for something that, that that's a mystery. We're looking for something that we can find out. 
We can find out. All right, so you recognize your ministry by seeing what you do well and what you don't. Talk to other people, get their ideas about what they see in you, and then try some things, you know? Are you gifted at teaching, you know, the kids class? Not going to know until you try. And I know I'm using gifted in different ways. I, it's old habits. But are you, you know, good at visiting people and visiting, you know, shut-ins, going to the nursing homes, going to the hospital? You got to try it till you know. Are you good at, at working with, you know, neighborhood? kids with with recreation activities and after school reading program who knows you need to try you need to try different things and as you do it you won't expect to see a combination of positive results personal satisfaction and affirmation from the church positive results it should go well okay If it doesn't go well, it's probably not your thing. Maybe not the first time, all right? But after a number of times of doing something, it's still not going well. That may not be your thing. You should enjoy it to some degree, okay? You should find some personal satisfaction. And you should find that other people say, you know what, you do a good job with that. And by the way, that's something we need to be doing. We need to be building one another up and recognizing when people do things well and helping them to see that so they can know that and and they can develop these areas that they're good at. All right. And then finally, remember that your ministry should build up the church. Okay. And so what you're doing... um, I use the principle of the gifts of the Spirit, the gift of the Spirit in Galatians 5 and the works of the flesh that he mentions and kind of look, okay, what things are resulting from what I'm doing? And if it's caused, causing anger and rivalry and dissension in the church, then it's not good. It's not. You're not building up the church. But when I'm seeing joy and love and self-control and, and, you know, the other gifts there, then I'm on the right track and the church is being built up. So these are just some thoughts that I've gotten from looking at jigsaw puzzles and looking at scripture and, and thinking about how we as a church mesh together a little bit like a jigsaw puzzle. So I hope that this has been meaningful and helpful to you. I want to close with a couple of verses out of Galatians 3. Galatians 3, Ephesians 3, verses 20 and 21. It says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, According to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. I love that. I love that. That idea that God wants to work in us. Right? His power is at work within us to bring glory in the church in Christ Jesus. And that he is able to do more than we ask or imagine. Immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine. That means you can dream big, you can think big, you can come up with ideas that don't seem reasonable. I mentioned before this lady, Odia, that, that that's a prayer warrior in Cuba, and she spent 10 years praying that the church would get a bus, and it was such a ridiculous prayer until the day they called and said, we've got a bus if you guys would like it. Dream big. Think big. God wants to do big things in us, in the church, for his glory, through Christ Jesus. 
Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for the people that were willing to to look at these lessons and, and go through it with me. And, and I pray that your church will be built up that we may grow upward and inward and outward for your glory. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thanks a lot.